All right, so we just covered the Henry system. Now this, this will be a little bit quicker and easier once we have everything blocked out to then put in the classification for NCIC is pretty simple. The reason we have the NCIC classification system is at one point we had to figure out how to put these formulas or a formula into a computer and having that, you know, nominator, denominator, dashes, small letters, on and on. Uh, and there wasn't a really good way to put that in a computer. So they came up with the NCIC classification system. It's represented by letters or numbers in the 20 blocks appearing below the Henry classification block on the fingerprint card. Uh, here is the uh, classification here, uh, Henry classification. And then here's a series of 20 blocks. And that's where you put the NCIC information. Purpose of the NCIC classification is to express the classification formula in computer language. Each two blocks represents the pattern in one finger, starting with uh, the right thumb and ending with the number 10 little finger. So as you see here, the first two boxes are the right thumb. And then we have the right index, right middle, right ring, all the way down to the left little finger. And each of these digits, the pattern that that is, will end up with a two position code, letters or numbers, and or numbers. All right, so let's see what the rules are for this. Now this would be for one set of, of for a finger. So there's two boxes, right? So if you have a plain arch for that finger, so let's say we're just starting with the number one, the, the right thumb. A plain arch is an A in the first block and an A in the second. So two A's mean it's a plain arch. A tinted arch is a T in the first block and a T in the second, so two T's. An ulnar loop is shown by placing the first number of the ridge count in the first block and the second number in the second block. So if it's 12, you have one, two in the two blocks. If the ridge count is less than 10, then you start with a zero and then the number. So it'd be zero, six, zero, seven, whatever. If the finger that you're doing is a radial loop, you add 50 to the ridge count and you place that number in the two boxes. Now, why 50? Well, that then tells you it's a radial loop instead of an ulnar loop. If it's an ulnar, it's gonna be less than 50, far less than 50. But if it's 50 or more, or well, 51 or more, then you're going to have um, a radial loop. And if you're looking at the classification, the NCIC classification, and you wanna figure out what the ridge count is, you just subtract 50, right? All right, so if it's 61 in that two box, then you know that it was a radial loop with a ridge count of 11. A plain whorl is shown by the uppercase P in the first block, and then the tracing is in the second block, if it's an inner, meat, or outer. So it could be a PI if it's a plain whorl with an inner tracing. A double loop whorl is shown by the lowercase d in the first block and the tracing in the second. A central pocket loop whorl is shown with the uppercase C in the first block and the tracing in the second, I, M, or O. An accidental whorl is shown by an uppercase X in the first block and the tracing in the second. Amputated or missing fingers are shown by placing an uppercase X in both blocks. 
and a completely scarred or mutilated finger, but it's there, is shown by placing an uppercase S in the first block and an uppercase R in the second. Okay, so let's see that in chart form. Plain arch, double A. Tented arch, double T. Capitals. Ulnar loop, the actual ridge count. Radial loop, the ridge count plus 50. A plain whirl is a P plus the tracing. Central pocket whirl is a C plus the tracing. Double loop whirl is a small d plus the tracing. Accidental, an X plus the tracing, accidental whirl. And a missing finger, finger is double X, a scar mutilated is SR. We can look at this and figure out what we had on the card to end up with this combination. So let's look at the first two. That would be the number one finger, the right thumb. And it says a 23 count ulnar loop because we have 23 in there showing the count, all right? Number two finger, the index finger on the right hand, PI, capital P, capital I, that's a plain whirl with an inner tracing. Number three, double A's, two capital A's, that's a plain arch. Fourth finger, small d, capital O, that would be a double loop whirl with an outer tracing. Number five is a 13 count ulnar loop. We know it's ulnar because it's less than 50, less than 51. And then now on number six, that's a six count ulnar loop, zero six. Seventh finger, that is a 12 count radial loop. Remember, if you're figuring out what it is, you deduct 50. Because it's over 50, we know it's radial. So that would make it a 12 count radial loop. Number eight is a 12 count ulnar loop because we have the number 12 in there. Number nine is a tented arch. Two capital T's is a tented arch. And number 10 is a central pocket loop whirl with a meet tracing, a meeting tracing. So that's how we fill that out. And you see that it goes below the Henry classification. It goes right in here. Once again, blocking out your card makes it pretty simple. So, hey, there you have it. We just learned two fingerprint classification systems, the Henry system and the NCIC system.